Hey, it's the Chief Bonding with Board Games. Today I get to talk to you about a preview copy of a game that Eagle Griffin Games sent me. I don't have a box, so I'm just showing you the board. This is Glendrover's Galactic Rebellion. Now, for those that haven't played it, I started playing Age of Empires 3 Age of Discovery, which is Glendrover's first like worker placement area control game long time ago. It's actually the first game I ever played with worker placement, I think, and I loved it. Then they went through the name change, uh, and this has been tough for me, so it's then Glendrover's Empire's Age of Discovery. Let me check. Yes. Okay. All the Those games all happen in the 1700s. You're sending people over to the New World. Well, in this one, it's very similar. If you like those, you're going to like this. We'll get to that in a bit, but this is in space. You've got a galactic senate, you're landing on planets, and the worker placement area control feel is very similar, but slightly different. So again, this is Glendrover's game. This is in space. I'm gonna go show you how the game plays, how it works. All the components I have are from, um, they're, they're not final art. They're very nice, but they don't have all the miniatures. This is on Kickstarter right now, so they don't have all the miniatures there. So I'll show you those placekeepers. Um, but uh, I hear the board's fairly close, but again, whatever you see, uh, not final product. So, but I'm gonna show you how it works. Let's do it. All right, we open up with an overall of the board. Over here is gonna be your turn order track, which I'll explain in greater detail in a bit. And these are the planets that you're going to be taking actions on and controlling for victory points. You can even see a little bit of the Galactic Senate down here, which is kind of part of this. But I've got this set up, and I'm gonna explain setup real quick. When you go through uh, your setup, every planet's gonna get a little science lab cube. These will be used later by your scientist. I'll explain more on that later. Um, you're going to have victory points that are just blindly seated in, so they're, they're seated in uh, without you knowing what they are, and then it's going to tell you that if I end up with the majority on that planet during a scoring phase, I'm going to get six victory points, or if I tie or I'm in second place, I'm going to get two. Now, they range from nine, oh, what are they? We got nine, five, eight, four, eight, four, five, one, seven, three. So these will be seated in, obviously telling you the value. We've got trade routes. These will be used just like trade goods that are up here. And as you collect sets of these, they will make you money. So this counts as, a, uh, as two trade goods. If you get a set of three, you get three coin if they're all the same. You get a set of four, all the same, they're worth six credits or six coin. And if you have individual ones, three different individual ones, you get one. So you want to come down and get these trade routes because they really help jump you on being able to get your money. You'll be using smugglers to come down and get those, and I'll cover those in a little bit. Then you got the sentinels that are on here. And uh, what's going to happen is you're going to flip these upside down, all of them. You're going to draw two, and the first two you draw are going to get four sentinels. Now, in this game, they're just black pawns. They'll be like real cool plastic figures that look like some kind of mechanical robot things, I think. I don't know, maybe there's, a, there's men in them, who knows. But the first two drawn are going to get four. The next two planets drawn are going to get three sentinels placed on them, kind of like up here. And then you're going to get two. And then the last ones will just get one sentinel placed on them. Now I've got it set up for a four-person game. So this is representing this big galactic ship. Think uh, Star Destroyers will come in and blockade planets. So in a four-person game, these two planets are locked out. If we were playing five, only one would be shut down. If we were playing six, all the planets would be open. But these are shut down, which means you can't put troops and come over here and land on these and get their trade routes, get their victory points, or even come over and get their science labs. I'm going to go through and I'll run through this track real quick, and then I'll come back and probably spend a little bit more time on them. Um, and then I am going to, well, real quick, let me go down and show you what your player pieces do. All right, I'm going to tell you. I had this set up all real nice and I bumped the tablecloth and I kind of jacked it all up. It looked real cool. I'm not going to go set all these things back up. We'll just run through it. Now, to begin with, when you start, everybody begins the game with 10 credits, three of your little combat cubes that'll be thrown in a bag and, and I'll show you how combat works when we get over to the warfare block. And everybody is on every round really is going to have five rebels. 
Now these are little cylinders, but they will be represented by plastic guys, but you have five of them and you're gonna be using them to place in these different areas to take actions or get better units in the future or whatnot. And then you're gonna have your specialist, which you will get by using technologies that are gonna allow you, focus, there we go, technologies that are gonna allow you to either get some of them on every turn, or you can always pledge in in this area over here, which again, you're gonna see in a second, and that's gonna give you one of these special guys for the next turn. So you have smugglers and you have diplomats, and I'm not gonna pick the rest up because of the focus. You're gonna have scientists, you're gonna have heroes, you're gonna have troopers. And uh, again, they'll be represented by plastics. I just have counters right now. Go on Kickstarter, you can see they're doing some real cool stuff to distinguish them. Um, clearly, they haven't been made yet. So a real quick rundown on each one of these areas. Turn order's been established, but if you were to place your guys into the next area, that's gonna give you money, and it's also going to adjust the turn order. If you place them here, you're going to be putting your troops out onto any planets that you want, and it'll be resolved left to right, coming down. This area is where you're gonna come in, you're gonna pledge again, it'll be resolved left to right, but you're gonna be able to, to pick up trade goods that'll help you make money. And I wanted to show you how that money scoring phase works. If you have any three of different types, this set would be worth one credit. Not too good, you definitely wanna make sets because if I can make a set of three, these will be worth three credits. Also, right here I have a trade route that I've used from putting a smuggler down on a planet. These are worth two. So this is also three trade goods would get me three credits. So three credits, three credits. This up here would represent and give me six. I can't get it in, six credits. All right, so four of them will get you six. Now you could do that in a pure way without using a trade route as well. All right, and that would get me six credits. And these are all cumulative, you don't trade them in, this is just what you will get for your money each turn when you get to the income phase. Covert missions are where you're gonna place your units, again, getting your bonuses, and then you're gonna use those units like money in order to buy these cards here that are gonna give you victory points and allow you to do cool, special little things. Research tech is where you're going to either put your scientists, if you want a discount, or any other workers, spend your money, and you'll be able to buy cool little tech that's going to be helping you get other things throughout the game. Warfare is where you're going to pledge your, usually your heroes or your troopers, although you can put other guys in there just to fill up the spots, although they won't do anything for you. And that's going to allow you to go do combat on planet, either with the Sentinels or to do combat with other rebel factions. The specialist, this is when you pledge in here, you're going to end up getting these guys for use on the next turn. And you get what you, uh, what you pledge for, or if they're all used up, you can always spend money to go get a certain specialist of your choice. Galactic Senate is where you'll put your diplomats oftentimes, or you're gonna load this area up. There is a victory point deal that's gonna happen during scoring, and you're going to be bidding, you're gonna be doing a bidding thing on these cards over here, which do nasty things. It's as if you're able to vote for like a Star Destroyer to go over and blockade a planet. Some of that's in here, or to even damage areas. So imagine you're getting power and influence to move around a giant force that does mean and nasty things. All right, we're gonna walk through what these guys, each of these specialists do, all right? And I'm not gonna be able to get these to focus like I want, so I'm just gonna say their name, although now you can kind of see the smuggler. A smuggler is actually gonna be able to do you three things. If you have a smuggler, you can put him out on planetary influence, and when he goes over in ships, if he lands on an area that has an unclaimed trade route, you're gonna get it. The very sp first smuggler to get on a planet gets the trade route. This will come in front of you as the player, and it counts as two goods. So very valuable because it's gonna help you make money based on the sets that you have. First thing a smuggler can do. The th second thing a smuggler can do, and I'll zoom in real quick as I bump the camera, is a smuggler, when he comes in here and it's even referenced here, if a smuggler's right here, so I went and took my smuggler and I got right on here. And let's say the other players came in later. A smuggler gets to take two of these items. 
So I could come in and take these two medicines and I would be able to just peel them off because he gets two, whereas this guy's only gonna get to pick one. And again, you're working left to right, so he's gonna get the full pick and this guy's just gonna get leftovers. And a third person may come on there and just get the very last one and there'd be no point to be the fourth person because the smuggler's already taken two. Finite resource. And right below that, you're gonna see smuggler counts as times two. So in there for your combat missions, you're spending these guys like currency. They stay there. They don't wipe out of there until you actually spend them and use them. So he is going to be much more beneficial to me or I can get two in there very quickly if it costs two and more efficiently. So it depends where I want to use them. Do I want to use them as money? Do I want to use them to get me goods that'll make me money? Or are there some trade routes available over in here like this one? that I can come in and put my smuggler on planet and get an actual trade route. Next, the diplomat. The diplomat can come down into the Galactic Senate and he is worth two or she is worth two. So there's bidding that goes on here and there's majority rule for getting seven victory points at a scoring phase. I can also send my diplomat out onto a planet and when they get on planet, they're also going to create another uh, little rebel dude that's going to populate. So by putting your diplomats out, you can get more guys coming over to your side. Uh, you know, they're able to go out and convince more people to see things your way. So that's what a diplomat will do. Now, you can use these if you have them in other places. So I could technically put a diplomat in here. But he's not going to give me a discount or anything, but I could, if I had him in my supply, I could use him here or I could use him up here and just have him for, he counts as one. Um, he could be a placekeeper over here, but he can't go over and fight. All right. So you can use them in different ways, but their special abilities are where they really shine. So you generally want to use them for their design purpose. We'll just leave him in the uh, Senate. Scientist, I've already shown you some stuff, but we'll go into a little detail. If he's placed here, he's going to give me a five, uh, five credit discount. And what I love is if you get him out here, so you send him to ship, boom, he comes over here. And when you resolve it, he comes down and lands on planet. You will take this cube and convert it into another one of these. So instead of just having three of them, you would end up with four of them and you can collect up to 10 of these. And where that matters is when you go into fight, if you've got a bunch more of your cubes in the bag than the other guy, obviously the odds are your cubes are gonna be pulled out. Not guaranteed, but you're assisting your odds. The other thing it does is uh, we had a guy that had, I think seven of these cubes. Nobody wanted to pick a fight with him because you know the odds were he was gonna win. So he was able to avoid a lot of conflict via strength hugely thematic and realistic. Next we do our hero. Come on hero, stay in my hand. So again, the hero could go anywhere and do anything, but he's really strong if I can hold on to him. He's squirrely. He's really strong in the warfare track. If he goes and fights sentinels, these little guys, he even gets a bonus two to his cube count. So if I only had three cubes for just that fight against the sentinels, let's just say up here, I could throw two more cubes in there. And when you fight the sentinels, they always get five. So you've got to really pay attention to what they're doing because they are going to have five cubes. And by adding two more cubes to my basic general allotment, I'm now at least on an equal footing with them. If I've gotten my scientists down and picked up some more of these cubes, I might even be better off. The hero also will get you a bonus to up in covert ops. Makes sense. All right. Him or the smuggler, they work real good on covert things to get you cards, victory points. Troopers. Troopers do one of two things. They can go in here, come out and do battle. They don't get the bonus two if they're going against Sentinels, but don't forget, you can go against other rebel factions. But I love shipping them planetary sides. So they will come out, they'll land on a planet, and they are very tough. If I had uh, a battle and I lose a battle and I fight with a trooper, I'm simply going to lose the trooper. If I fight with a rebel or even a rebel and a smuggler, all right, let's just say this is all I had were these three. 
These guys aren't special. They're not trained combatants. If I lose a battle, I'm actually going to lose two of them. Now, I would have my choice. I'd probably say, well, let me just lose two of my basic rebels. But let's just say I had this. If I lose here, I'm going to lose both my smuggler and my rebel. Now, I don't lose my trade route or anything. Once I get it, I got it. But there are some bonuses at the uh, end game where if you have smugglers or scientists or diplomats on planet. So um, if you can bolster your defenses with a trooper, bully. All right, I've set up just the planet of Triga here to show scoring. You would be doing this with all your planets and you would be scoring your Galactic Senate. This is not the Galactic War phase. That comes at the end of the third epoch. I'm going to just show the regular scoring that's going to happen. Um, and then I will show you what the Galactic War thing does. But just so you know, we would be doing this for all the planets and you would score um, the Galactic Senate at the end of each of the epochs. There's three of them. So there's going to be three scoring rounds. So in a scoring round, all you're going to do, let's just focus in on Triga. You're going to count up whoever has the majority. Uh, in this case, blue would have the majority. Uh, coming in second with one, two, three, four units would be red. These other units, there's two for green and one unit for yellow. They're not going to score. So it would be five victory points for this planet for blue, one victory point for red. You would go around and do that with every single planet. Now, when you come down to the Galactic Senate, all you're going to be doing is looking for the, that majority and whoever has majority is going to get seven victory points. Now there are happy ties here. So when you're doing the planet, there's no happy ties. You end up uh, kind of splitting it and rounding down one. But here, if you're tied, there is a happy tie. So now diplomats count for two. So two, four, six, eight, and nine. And then you can see he's got two and he threw a scientist in here. Just counts as one, three, four, five, six. And then you've got six for red, and you've got just one lonely, or sorry, one lonely little green down here who's just, he must have been bidding on a bunch of things. So the seven victory points will go to yellow. No happy ties for second, just seven victory points for yellow. So that's how you're going to score the, the planets. That's how you score the Galactic Senate. Again, you would do that for all the planets. All right, I wanted to show you Galactic War. Now this will happen at the very end of the third epoch. And this is going to be where the Sentinels on all the planets are going to rise up and try to wipe out these pesky rebels that have been messing around and they're gonna to try to exterminate them. And I wanted to show how this breaks down and it takes a little bit of time because you're gonna do for each planet at the, end of, uh, at the end of turn eight and then right after you do this Galactic War, that will be your third and final scoring round. That scoring round will be treated just like the other two, but it is significantly affected by what's about to happen here. Now, I've brought in all the military science cubes for each of the uh, colors that we have represented on the board, including the Sentinels. The Sentinels in this final Galactic War are going to get eight of these military science cubes. Now, remember, they usually only get five when you're just doing normal warfare against them. But in this Galactic War, they will get eight. So what will happen is, now again, I just set it up on one planet, so we didn't have it on all of them. What will happen is, though, you're going to get your, your bag out because you're going to be drawing from the bag. Um, and you're going to sit here and say, okay, so who has majority? Well, it's blue. We do have two sentinels. So the very first sentinel is going to battle with blue. And they will battle with them until uh, either they lose both their sentinels in this case or blue's completely wiped out. So you're going to sit here, you're going to take all eight of these, they're going to go into the bag. Now blue must not have been focusing on getting more military science cubes. They only have their default start of three. However, they've got a lot of power in here. So these go into the bag, all of them, and you're going to draw three. So it's this sentinel, he's fighting this trooper. And you're just going to draw three out. You draw them out one at a time. My hand is so big, I'm telling you, I'm just going to kind of set this up. So you would draw and okay, cool. We got one of our blues. So there's only three in there, but we got one. We'd go into the bag and draw out, whoops, we've drawn out a black. We go back into the bag for the third and final draw. There's all kinds of tension going on and boom, we've got a black and this trooper is gone, gone, gone. All right, then you're going to repeat that process again and again until this sentinel dies. 
So you might go through and get lucky and pull that extra cube and kill one of these sentinels off. And you might be able to do it again, but just as likely, just as possible. So blue could hold on and then, you know, they're going to end up with, if they maintain this majority here, they would end up scoring the higher victory points for this planet. But it is just as possible that they would come in and lose every single battle to these Sentinels. Now remember, the next fight would be against a trooper. And the troopers, when you lose a fight against a Sentinel or somebody else, you only lose that one for one you know, trade-off, so this trooper would be gone. But this is where it starts to get devastating. If we went in and drew again and got this same result, now we don't have combat units. So we're going to start losing them in order of two. And we come in and same result again. And we lose them in order of two. I'm taking the rebels off because oftentimes there are bonuses um, for keeping these specialty units on planet. So you would probably hope to pull them off last and maybe win. Now you're saying, now look, he's not even the majority anymore. Red now has four units on here. This poor soul only has two. Doesn't matter. He was primary. The battle will continue until he either wins or he's wiped out. Let's say that we draw again and yep, he should add more military science cubes because he loses again. These units are gone. It is at this point in time that you will now turn and now deal with who's in first. Red is in. All right, you're back. So you've seen, uh, you've seen that turn order track, which is tight. Uh, nothing's been lost from that from Glenn Drover's Age of Discovery. I'm just going to call it Age of Discovery. I'm always wanting to say either Age of Empires 3 or Glenn Drover's Empires, Age of Discovery. I'm going to call it Age of Discovery. Nothing's been lost there, but there's some tweaks. You've seen the Covert Ops. Love the Covert Ops. You can go in, grab some victory points, get something or do something. And, and again, it's right back on that Covert Ops board where you can build up and just be ready for some stuff that's in there. The... Um, Galactic Warfare at the very end, right before final scoring, that threw some people. Um, one of the uh, kind of veteran players of the Age of Discovery game felt that this was much more random than uh, the Age of Discovery. And it is, but it's all mitigate. You can mitigate that. Um, I actually played one game where I had a huge power base and nobody was going to challenge me there but the Sentinels. I was a little weak. I only had, I, I never added any of the science labs. So I wiped out those, those uh, Sentinels before we got to the final Galactic War. Didn't want to mess with them. I, I knew they could take me out. And I told these guys when we were playing, hey, these guys are going to be drawing eight cubes at the end. They're easy to take out now or easier when you're in the mid game but they're going to be very hard at the end. If you don't want them to come in and totally ruin your plans, take care of them, use actions, get rid of them. However, you can also do what I did. I see four Sentinels on a planet. There's no way I'm gonna challenge the first or second player there. They've got way too much of a majority. You know what? I got one or two little rebels on your planet. They're not messing with you. They're not stealing your points. They're just a little cell, but they may be there to pick up the pieces when the Sentinels completely destroy you. Maybe I pick up some cheap second place points. Uh, maybe I've thrown a trooper on there and I am the last man standing and I'm able to take out the Sentinels after everybody else has been wiped out and whoop, now I'm getting some points. So the fact that it's mitigated and you know it going in, and I made sure I told people as we started playing, hey, I'm not, don't be surprised by this. This is the galactic war. This is what's gonna happen. Um, that is very unique and different from Age of Discovery. The, um, the way you pick up your specialist, in this case, the smugglers and how they go down and get their trade routes. So it feels the same as when you're picking up, uh, you know, uh, the ship's captain or the uh, priest to go over. But instead, you're picking up a diplomat or a smuggler is going over and getting you a, a trade goods route that's worth more. It's worth two instead of one. Um, so all that is very similar, very familiar. Uh, uh, players of Age of Discovery will be very comfortable in knowing what they're doing. It's a real quick get up and go. Um, and I really love that. I, the, the worker placement track, both 
putting your guys in, your rebels in, or your pieces in, and then triggering them as you go down is very tight. It works really, really well. Um, when I first started to play, I thought, oh, have they tweaked this? Have they messed it up? Nope, because I think they had perfection. Glenn Drover reached perfection in my point of view on how he runs that. I really like the way that track works and it continues to work that way here. So that's not lost and I still, it just, it's like a warm blanket. I love it. It's, this is the first, not this, but Age of Discovery was the first worker placement kind of game I played and I love getting my workers, getting my specialists, letting them do their thing and, and just enjoy that interaction. Still here in this, in space. Hopefully you've had a good chance uh, after I've showed you the, the pieces and components. Again, not final art, but you can see how things are gonna work. Um, and uh, there's still time to jump on Kickstarter. Get on there, I'm looking, they've got unique sculpts going on. My little cubes and my little chits did not compare to like the hero with the sword above his head. Just getting ready to jump on in there. <laughs> See you guys later. Go get you some plastic. 